If you're prepping to take the SAT or ACT, or maybe even both, you'll probably notice that both exams essentially test you on the same math ideas, but in slightly different ways. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at an example of a math question in SAT style and ACT style. Now, this is just a, a basic example, but you should know whether you're going to take the SAT or ACT, that mathematics will be kind of uh, tested differently, right? But of course, you'd still need to know the same underlying math concepts. But we'll take a look at this example. Now, if you think you can solve this problem right here, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Of course, I'm gonna walk through it step by step. But before we get started, let me tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help with the SAT or ACT, make sure to check out my SAT and ACT math prep courses. You can find a link to those in the description below. All right, so here is our question, and I'll get into the solution on how to solve this in just one second. But first, let's just do a general comparison between SAT and ACT math. What are some kind of main differences? Well, uh, what I'm gonna tell you right now is just some general differences. You can have similar questions on both the ACT and SAT, but in general, here are some uh, things that distinguish one of these exams from the other. So first, for the SAT, the format is uh, really kind of primarily abstract and symbolic. In other words, you're gonna be using a lot of mathematical notation like this. So what we're looking at here would probably be something you would see on the SAT versus the ACT, the format is often uh, framed in words or kind of real life scenarios, all right? So we'll talk more about some uh, other distinguishing factors here in just one second. Now the question style for the SAT is kind of like a pure math question, right? It's kind of direct and to the point like this question right here. So we have a function, f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. I want to know what f of f of 2 is equal to. Now, the ACT often has like contextual questions that are kind of embedded in a verbal context. Again, we're talking about general comparisons, but uh, these are some kind of good things to understand, especially if you're not sure whether you want to take the SAT or ACT. In other words, which type of questions you may do better with. Now on the SAT, the uh, time pressure is a little bit more time per question, All right? You got about 1.25 minutes per question versus the ACT, you got about a minute per question. So you kind of have to go a little bit faster on SAT or ACT, excuse me. And then on the SAT, uh, you're kind of understanding, the emphasis is understanding conceptual relationships, right? So you really kind of understand like the concepts of what's going on in here in terms of uh, the algebra, right? And the bigger mathematical picture. Now the ACT, you're kind of uh, quickly extracting math from a, a con uh, context and applying a procedure. Now, again, you can have overlapping similarities between the SAT and ACT. And if you just take practice uh, test and uh, practice SAT and practice ACT exams, you'll get a sense of the differences that I'm talking about and which type of question you probably will perform better on. And then when we're talking about calculators on the SAT, there's sections where you cannot use a calculator. And then on the ACT, you can use a calculator throughout the entire uh, section. All right, so those are some big uh, differences between the SAT and ACT math. It's probably just easier to take some practice exams and kind of uh, feel the differences. But let's take a look at this question right here. We're talking about an SAT style version of this question. All right, so we have f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. We want to know the value of f of f of 2. Now, if you don't understand this question and you are taking the SAT or ACT, well, you definitely need to do some review because we're talking about first year algebra here. All right, so let's just do a quick review of functions. And if you don't understand anything, just kind of reference, um, well, a few things here. You can reference more of my videos on my YouTube channel about functions and algebra. 
But uh, if you are taking the SAT and the AC, uh, ACT, you need to know a lot about functions. All right, so here is our function. We have f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. So let's just do a quick example of how to evaluate a function. So let's say given this function, I want to find f of 3. So that means I'm going to replace this x with 3 and then uh, replace the x over here with 3 and then evaluate this algebraic expression. Okay, so hopefully this is pretty easy for most of you watching this video. So f of 3, f of, three of this function is the following. Again, we're going to replace this x with 3 and this x with 3 and then simplify the remaining numeric expression. So here we have 2 times 3 is 6. So 6 plus 3, of course, is 9. So f of 3 is equal to 9. So now that we know how to evaluate a function using a particular value, we can better understand what's going on here. All right, so what is this notation saying? Well, this is like a composite function. So we're trying to evaluate this function right here for f of f of 2. So what does this mean? Well, here we need to find the value of f of 2. So this is a, a kind of fancy notation, f of 2 for a particular value. Just like over here, when we were trying to find out what f of 3 is in this particular function, we got 9. So what we're going to have to do here is find the actual value of f of 2 and then plug that back into this function and we'll get the right answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So again, thinking about this problem, we need to find the value of f of 2. All right, so given this function right here, what is f of 2? Well, again, all we have to do is plug in 2 where the x's are. So this is going to be 2 times 2, not x. So 2 times 2, of course, is 4. And 4 plus 3 is, is uh, 7. So the value of f of 2 is 7. Okay, so this is the first thing that we need to do. All right, so f of 2 is equal to 7. So when we're looking at our function here, uh, f of f of 2, this entire thing here now is equal to 7. So now we need to figure out what f of 7 is equal to, and we'll get the right answer. All right, so let's go ahead and do that right now. And again, we're talking about basic algebra here. So what is f of 7? Well, again, we're going to replace this x with 7. So 2 times 7 is 14. 14 plus 3 is 17. So 17 is our answer. Okay, so here again is our SAT style question. We're using kind of algebraic uh, symbology. It's very direct, right? So given this function right here, f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. What is the value of f of f of 2? Well, the correct answer is 17. Okay, so now that we understand this, let's take a look at the same question, but like in an ACT style math format. Okay, so here is the same question, but in this case, we're kind of using words or a real life scenario to express the same thing mathematically or to ask the same question mathematically. So this is something that you might see like on the ACT. But again, you could have a very similar type of questions on both exams. All right, so let's take a look at the question. So a machine applies a rule of f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. An input of 2 goes through the machine twice. What is the final output? Okay, so again, we're using a lot of words here. But if you did pretty well in your algebra courses, you should be able to understand this question, This, uh, especially this part right here, a machine, because when you learn about functions, you typically learn about something called a function machine. So although this is a little bit more abstract, if we kind of model it, we'll still be able to understand the same question as the SAT style question. So let's take a look at that right now. So a common model to talk about functions is something called a function machine. Now, if you never learned functions using a function machine model, well, this is very easy, so let's talk about it right now. All right, so we have this machine right here, 
And the way this works is that we throw things into the machine. Specifically, we throw numbers into this machine. Maybe like the number two or seven. Doesn't make a difference. But once these numbers go into the machine, this is our input values. The machine is going to do something to these values. And then we're going to end up with an output value. All right, so this is the basic idea of a function machine. So let's talk about a few things here. So our input uh, values, in other words, the kind of fuel that goes into our function machine is X, all right? So X is the input value. But basically, we put these input values into this function machine, then something happens, all right? So we need to apply a rule. So this is a function rule. So what this is saying is that we're going to put some input value X into the machine, and then the rule is the following. We're going to take that input value, multiply it by 2, and then add 3, and that will yield our output value, which is going to be associated with the variable Y. Now, in algebra, Y is equal to F of X. So we're talking about real kind of basic algebraic concepts here. And if you don't understand uh, what I'm kind of talking about here from an algebra standpoint, well, then you definitely need to do a lot of review because there is a lot of algebra on the SAT and ACT. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about X and Y. So in a function, all the input values that you can plug into a function is called the domain, all right? So if I asked you, uh, all the values that you can plug into this function machine, what is that called? Well, that entire set of values is called the domain, and the respective output value is called the range, all right? So we have the input value, that's the domain of the function, and the output value is called the range. And X is what we call the independent variable, all right? So in other words, X is independent of Y, but Y is dependent on X. So we start off with an input value that is going to yield some output value. Okay, so we're talking about real critical function concepts, things that you need to understand in algebra. But if we kind of think about this problem in this manner, well, we can answer the question. All right, so again, our rule here is uh, 2x plus 3, right? So that's what the rule is. Whatever x is, whatever our input value is, the rule states take uh, that input value, multiply it by 2, and then um, add 3 to it, and we get our output value. So effectively, the rule here is equal to 2x plus 3, or the function f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. Okay, so you can kind of... Um, rewrite these models using algebra symbology. But let's go back to the question here. So a machine, a machine, excuse me, applies the rule f of x is equal to 2x plus 3, right? So we kind of think of our machine here. Here is our function machine. It's this right here. So we have an input value and then an output value. So an input value of 2 goes through this machine. So we're going to drop 2 into our machine here. Now, what's going to happen, we're going to get an output value. So it says take an input value of 2, and it's going to go through the machine twice. All right, so let's just kind of look at it this way here. So here is our function machine. We'll make it real simple. So we're going to plug 2 into the machine. We're going to get an output value, some output value, y. And then we're going to run that through the machine again. Right, so this is very much like what we did in the previous problem. Right, so when we put two into our function machine, if you recall, we got a seven, and then we took that seven and ran it through the machine again, and we got 17. Okay, so that is exactly what we need to do here from an algebraic standpoint. But if again, if you don't understand uh, kind of the verbal version of this problem, you won't be able to do the mathematics. Okay, so I'll kind of spare you all the kind of final math here because effectively we're going to be doing the same thing as the other style of question. So we're going to plug in a 2 here. Well, let's just do it real quick. So if we plug 2 into our function machine, that's going to be our input value. So 2 times 2, of course, is 4. So 4 plus 3 is 7. That is our output. And then we're going to run uh, this back into the machine. So we're going to get 2 times 7, which, of course, is 14. 
plus 3 is 17, which would be our final answer. Okay, so you can see here there are definite differences in terms of uh, math concepts and how they're tested on the SAT and ACT. But uh, whether you take the SAT or ACT, you still need to understand all this underlying mathematics, which is a ton of algebra, advanced algebra, even some trigonometry, and a lot of geometry. So it's a lot of mathematics. And if you need help uh, reviewing this, make sure to check out my SAT and ACT math courses. They'll really, really help you out. You can find links to those in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the SAT, ACT, or both exams if you are taking them. And actually, that's actually a pretty good uh, suggestion if you have the time, right? And uh, you can kind of, you know, for the college or university that you're going for, you know, use one uh, score or the other. All right, so with all that being said, I wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.